Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte and welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a hell of a long while since I have uploaded properly and there have been so many reasons for this but today I want to talk about why I started my little business. And I know many people have started businesses during lockdown and I started mine for a very, very personal reason to me. And I am going to talk about mental health here. So if talking about mental health triggers you, then please stop watching. I don't want anybody to be triggered by this. But I struggled really, really bad with postnatal depression and it messed with my head really, really bad and was hard. So I'm going to start about the lead up to all this and I was obviously pregnant during the pandemic um, if you follow me on my social media you would know I gave birth in October of 2020 I gave birth at 35 weeks and I was in hospital for three days prior to giving birth they was monitoring me because I had complications during this pregnancy I had low pap A, there was a blood flow issues to the placenta, um, which was Doppler issues, I said that it was, um, and I had obstetric calostasis, which can be quite dangerous, and in the long run, Harriet was okay. Um, we knew there was a chance I could be giving birth early. I got told if I carry past 30 weeks, and that is great, but I cannot go past 37 weeks because it can go really dangerously. I went into the hospital at 34 weeks and four days, I think it was, just to have my routine blood test every week and monitoring due to the obstetric calostasis. Um, so if we had to have that blood test done every week and the monitoring and they took my bloods it was slightly raised again and then they did the monitoring first they go can you feel any tightenings is do you think you're having contractions because i thought i was just getting braxton hicks which is what can happen at that stage and during your pregnancy as you get towards the end so i was like yeah there's a few tightenings i think it's just braxton hicks it's not that bad well, they did the test that determines if you're going to go into pre-labour or not. Um, and they did that test to see if I was going to give birth sooner rather than later. And that come back positive, which meant I could give birth at any point from that minute to with the next week. I had to have a steroid injection twice. Um just to help Harriet's lungs as she come out. And on uh, 35 weeks, my body decided it was gonna start going into labor. So from this blood test that I had at 34 weeks and four days, I had been admitted to hospital at this point because of the monitoring and the test to show that labor was gonna start. And then I was in hospital till 35 weeks and on that day, um, Harriet's um, blood pressure dropped they couldn't no it's Harriet's heart rate dropped and it kept dropping and dropping overnight so they was like if this baby don't come now then you're going to need an emergency c-section and when they checked I wasn't dilating but I was in so much pain they was like right we're getting you up to the labour ward now so within 30 minutes I went from zero centimeters to three centimeters as the doctor checked and she goes right you're dilated we've got to break your waters now so after they broke my waters I was they said within 10 minutes right you're now in labor you've gone past the four centimeters work four centimeters mark you are in labor and within two hours and 11 minutes Harriet was born on my husband things hit him immediately he knew 
things weren't going great for me. It took me a few days after giving birth. Um, but Harriet come out and she wasn't breathing and she needed oxygen. To, she had five pumps of oxygen. But all I can remember was watching that clock tick down. And I think two or three minutes passed by and I was just waiting for that cry. And at that point, it still didn't hit. And then we was in hospital, I think on the third day of her life, she obviously had the jaundice check um, because after she got the oxygen, she was fine. She was breathing, everything was okay. Um, she got the jaundice check and she needed to be put under the phototherapy light because how bad her jaundice was really bad. So she was under there for about 18 hours, I think, in total and... For me, that was when it hit, that was when reality just went slap bang in the face of what had actually happened. Seeing her there in that little basket in a little crib with just a nappy and her eye mask on. I will try and put a photo here so you can see. But that was when it hit for me, she was so tiny. She was £4.14 luckily, so she wasn't really, really small, but she wasn't big either, but she, her weight was okay. And that, for me, was when it hit. After, I think it was two days after that, on day six of her life, we was lucky enough to bring her home. And on that day, it was time to come home. The doc one of the doctors said to me, um, you need to be really careful. There is a chance that she could stop breathing at any point. You need to go, you need to research um, how to do CPR on babies, what happens if she does stop breathing and learn from there. Um, they didn't teach me none of that. They didn't go through any of that. They just said, just look on YouTube. YouTube will show you what you need to know. And that for me has made it really hard. I got so paranoid to go out. I would not leave her side. She was constantly glued to me. And that didn't help my mental health in a way. And it got to the stage where I knew I needed help. I needed help to get back to me, to get my mentality back. Because I was at the lowest of the low. And another trigger one in here, I'm sorry. I didn't want to be here anymore. I couldn't cope mentally. I couldn't cope physically. I'd completely lost myself. And admitting I needed help was the biggest step I had taken because I was so good at hiding when I wasn't feeling great. I got so good at hiding, putting on a smile because I had postnatal depression with Bobby and then I got diagnosed with depression a couple of years ago as well so you get to the stage where you are good at faking a smile putting on a brave face so everybody thinks you're okay but at this point I couldn't do that and I asked for help and within asking for that help I got involved with a specialist team and they encouraged me to find a hobby find something to take time out for me and that is where scrunchies by Mrs. Mason comes in. I tried making scrunchies with an old pair of maternity leggings that would no longer fit because they was ginormous because I had piled on the pounds during this pregnancy. I just couldn't stop eating. But yeah, um, I tried with a old set of leggings and I loved the way it turned out. I'd made them with a needle and thread by hand and I enjoyed that time. I enjoyed that mental space for me not to think about anything just to focus on this one thing and that's what i did and i enjoyed every single second so from there we well i say we i created a instagram a facebook page we've got obviously got an etsy store twitter and tiktok so we have five sources of social media in a way and I was so lucky to have the support of my husband through this because he was one that suggested buying a sewing machine so he helped me get one of them and he also helped buying fabric so 
if he wants to treat me he knows a fabric is the way to my heart so he has brought some fabrics for me to create scrunchies and from there each step is just getting bigger and bigger we have three size scrunchies which is the xxl which is the one in my hair this is the snow white one that i've called but it's called snow because it's as white as snow and it's just so beautiful to go in a bun and my hair's long and thick and it can hold that really really well we do the regular size ones and mini ones and from there it's just grown for me like i've not made many sales but i've made products that i love products that i enjoy and we have made baby headbands um i'll show you a baby headband here because we put one on harriet and it was just amazing we have made hair bubbles and hair clips with bows and baby headbands and they are just the cutest things in the world so I've been in love with these products and I've invested in myself and I took time mentally for me. We all need something to focus on every now and again and it's okay to admit that you need help. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing to recognise that you need this support, you need this help and you need time for yourself. Whether that is just taking a bath to yourself, going to the toilet on your own, going out for five minutes on your own, just have that time and if you've got a supportive partner or supportive family then that is even more amazing because if you say to them i'm struggling today can you help i guarantee they would jump at the offer to help you there's no point in hiding or saying that you're you're not struggling when you know that you are because admitting to yourself that you need help is the biggest step you can do and admitting to others you need help it's not a bad thing it really isn't i'm going to link my socials for my etsy store down below and the name for it on everything is scrunchies by mrs mason i am so proud of my little etsy store um i think we have made 18 sales in total at the minute and i know that's not a lot considering i have just started out i am not in this for the money i'm in this purely because it helps me mentally i'm enjoying this and if we grow we grow and i'm so thankful for my friends and family that have actually supported me and i've had someone in ireland message me on twitter going i need to buy your products they are so cute they are amazing i need to buy them and that is what she did she brought them and that was my first international parcel sent out and there is a pack with me video that I've already uploaded to YouTube. So if you would like to have a look at that, then I will try and link that as well. But I just want to say thank you for watching. I know how I have rambled on so much about postnatal depression and what happened. But that was the reason I started my business. I started it when I was at the lowest of the low. And now I'm coming back up to being me. I am so grateful for it because this has saved me my little business has saved my life and i'm so grateful for that so if you'd like to see more about me and my little business then please subscribe down below like and comment on this video and follow us on our socials if you'd like to see more of what's coming up on our etsy store or even if you'd just like to follow my day-to-day -day life and thank you for watching